Baseball in the Burrows is presented by Verizon. Verizon is going ultra, so you can too. Welcome to Baseball in the Burrows. I'm Joel Sherman. This is going to be real easy. I'm a baseball columnist for the New York Post. John Heyman is a baseball columnist for the New York Post. Our podcast is called The Show with Joel Sherman and John Heyman. So we talk baseball an awful lot. I'm glad we're in this forum talking baseball some more on the brink of the first Subway Series of 2022. And we arrive here with two first place teams. John, and as I think about this, if you and I were together on April 7th before a pitch was thrown, yeah. and we set up this Yankee and Mets scenario, this is where the Yankees would be way ahead in the AL East, best record in the American mm -hmm. League, Mets ahead in the NL East, second best record in the league without a start from yeah. Jacob deGrom, we'd be like, yay, great, look how terrific they're doing. And yet a week before the deadline, we feel they're both wobbling a little. So yeah. do we have some perspective here? Why don't we start <laughs> Yankees. What do you think yeah. about this first half and where they are? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a great first half by the Yankees. I, I had them as a third-place team, as I told Aaron Boone on MLB <laughs> Network, and he's such a good sport. He was so nice about it. I mean, Harold Reynolds was in the other room, like, going, oh, my God, what are you saying? And I just didn't see them as this kind of a dynamic team. You know, I'm, certainly we all knew Aaron Judge is a terrific, terrific player, but to this point, to me, he's the clear MVP. He has really carried this team, been great in the clubhouse, obviously been great, been able to play center, and he's hit up a storm right on that Maris pace right now. He's been terrific. I think the rotation has been really good. Obviously, the back end of that bullpen has been really good. Obviously, the loss of Michael King is huge, which you reported. He's out for the year. Very, very bad loss for them at this point. So they've had a couple of disappointments lately, but... What a great first half by the Yankees. Uh, you know, I'll pick up on one thing you didn't mention because everything you said is, is true, but you, you missed something that I think has been mm -hmm. very key. They wanted to make defensive improvements. Yeah. They've arguably been the best defensive team in the sport by a lot of metrics. I didn't know DJ LeMayu could play third base so well or Josh Donaldson could still play third base at the level he's doing. By having Isaiah kind of Falefa at short, Gleyber Torres went to second where he's much better than that. Aaron Judge has hand handled center field, and their catchers, which Trevino added before the season began, have been exceptional. I think it's helped them every day in every way. It's helped that pitching staff yeah. be better. But, you know, to your point, they've had a couple of, you know, Chad Green and Michael King where they're kind of Swiss Army knife relief pitchers, and now they're both out for the rest of the season. Relief has also been an issue pretty much the entire first half for the Mets, and yet first place without great relief pitching besides Edwin Diaz and without Jacob deGrom. So where do you, what do you think about where they are right now? I mean, they're in great position. Again, I did not pick them to win that division. I thought the Braves would win the division. They are the world champion. It was a logical pick. I, I went with the chalk. Uh, Buck Showalter obviously has done a terrific job, as has Aaron Boone. He doesn't probably get enough credit. I, I really like how feisty he's been this year. But, I mean, Showalter brought that gravitas that I think they needed. And it's really helped a lot of players, McNeil and some other players, really become who they can become. And, uh, you know, I'm very pleased by the way the, way the Mets have performed this year. I'm kind of with you. I think the bullpen, although I think they're like third in ERA in, 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 in the bullpen, I kind of think they need a little help. Some of that's because Diaz has been the best, which you just wrote about, best reliever in the game this year. I mean, striking out half the batters he faces. It's incredible. It's, it's a show when he comes in the game, and he's been great. But I, I do think they need to beef up that, uh, that bullpen, get a, get a, a good set, couple good setup type guys, and some lefties as well. Yeah, John, I, I think you hit on my key point about their first half. Watching the Mets the last few years, I don't think they've had a talent problem. I think they've had a direction problem. I think they've had a guidance problem. I think they've had a professionalism seriousness problem. And Buck Showalter's fo daily focus, uh, seriousness, and ability to get 26 people thinking the same way, that the final score of the game today is what really matters. And what are we going to do today that the outcome favors the Mets, I think has played to a talented yeah. team that clearly got more talented in the offseason, right? Yeah, you add Scherzer, I think that's you add Scherzer, you add Starling Marte, who when you watch him every day is an exceptional player, right? You're getting a better version of Lindor, Can has helped, Escobar, Chris Bassett. These were all improvements to a good talent base. 
and I think it, it, it's really been the difference in the first half for them. Why don't we stick with the Mets? We, as you and I are talking, we're eight days away from the trade deadline. I think we expect both New York teams to be active. The Mets already made a trade to try to address power Two slash trades. right uh, so a minor <laughs> one for a catcher yeah. for depth. And a more important one, because their power hasn't been good, their DH hasn't been good for Dan Volgoback. We don't think this is where they're going to stop, though. You mentioned yeah. relief pitchers. Give us some idea where you think this is going for them. Oh, I mean, they need to get a lefty reliever, whether it's Perez from the Orioles or Soto from the Tigers. I mean, there are seven or eight. Matt Moore has had a terrific year with, with Texas. There are seven or eight pretty good relievers on fairly crummy teams. So they should be able to get a lefty reliever. I mean, I was there last night. And they won 8-5, to five, very good game. Again, Alonzo was the star, and Diaz came in and closed the door. But, you know, they're testing out Peterson in the bullpen. If he can do that, that's a plus. I still think they need another lefty reliever. Jolie Rodriguez came in. He was not good. Uh, gave up a couple walks, a couple of hits. They had to pull him. Diaz came in the game. So I think you, you can make a case whether they need to get a bat more or bullpen. I would lean bullpen, but the bat... I, I think they're going to be getting one. I do agree. Vogelback is nice. He can hit righties, definitely. But I think, you know, I mean, Alonzo is carrying this team. You know, obviously they're getting good production from McNeil, Lindor, Nimmo, Marte. But, I mean, Alonzo has been carrying this team, and they need somebody batting fifth, batting sixth in there to back him up. And there are guys out there, whether it be Josh Bell, C.J. Crone, Trey Mancini, uh, Wilson Contreras, Ian Happ. There are a lot of guys, and they're in decent position to get one of those bats. Obviously, Juan Soto's the big name out there. It'd be fantastic if they can get Juan Soto, or the Yankees could get Juan Soto. But I just think the Mets are a major long shot being in that division. The Nats are not going to want to see Juan Soto on the other side of the field for at least the next two and a half years. They'll they'll be okay with Nelson Cruz or Josh Bell, but. Not one Soto. Yeah, I agree. And I think the thing that scares them, it's not just for two and a half years. With Steve Cohn's money, yeah. you have to assume this guy might be in your life, in your division for 15 years. And I think you and I know the bidding among teams for, for Soto will be intense enough that they don't have to take the Met offer, right? Like they're going to get great offers all around. John, I think I agree with you on the Met situation. And I just think big picture-wise that the Mets and the Yankees have reached the 60% point of the season, which is where they are now, but roughly 95 games, where they know there's only a handful of teams that could win the World Series. By the yeah. way, the two teams in New York, the Subway Series could be a preview of the World Series. This is yeah, not absolutely. just hopefulness. If you look at any projection system, there are two of the top four or five teams with the greatest likelihood of going to the World Series. And therefore, I think the next week is important that these teams really finish off and this is a moment where you have to say, we're going to have to sacrifice prospects we like to address the bullpen, to get another bat, to just fortify things on that end for the Mets. The Yankees are going to have to do the same thing. It feels like the Yankees are in for bigger stuff. Soto, Castillo, maybe Montas mm -hmm. if he proves healthy. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, certainly you got to make a play for Soto. If you can get him, it'd be perfect in Yankee Stadium. It'd be great anywhere, perfect in Yankee Stadium. Um, you got to make a play, but I I'm just not seeing it at this moment as we sit here now, and you never know what could happen on the trade market. It feels like, as we wrote, that the Cardinals have all these young prospects, positional prospects, which is what the Nats need, plus the Padres have these high-ceiling prospects a little bit further away, and you know A.J. Preller's going to be aggressive. I'm feeling like Cardinals, Padres are more likely there. I do think the Yankees will add an outfield bet. Obviously, Joey Gallo has not adapted to New York to this point. So we're looking at maybe Benintendi. If he gets the vaccination, he can come. They'd be happy with him, certainly. Um, and they certainly need to look at the bullpen as well as the Mets now with the injury to King. David Robertson is a name I think is going to come up for both teams. He had not a perfect ending with the Yankees. It was great for the team, though. And I think the Mets with Billy Epler there, the connection is strong. I, I could see him go to the Mets. I could see him go to the Yankees, too. But both teams need him or need that kind of a pitcher as well. You know, John, one of the silly things I hear when it comes to Soto is, well, the Yankees want to sign Judge at the end of the season. All right. <laughs> All right. So you sign Judge at the end of the season. You just have Soto play to 2025 on his contract. By then... You know, there's three years and not a yep. lot left on no. Stanton. Who knows what new financial streams you found? I would look west to the Dodgers and see what they've done. 
They've gone on overkill. They've yeah. traded for Mookie Betts. They traded for Manny Machado, for you, Darvish, for Scherzer, for Turner. You're the Yankees. You've yeah. got to flex your financial might, your muscle. You go for it at every turn. I would be hard on Soto. I would be hard on Castillo. If I could get both and it cleans out my eight best prospects, then go get more prospects. It isn't like the Yan The Yankees are good at putting prospects into the major mm. leagues, but like people get fooled by their prospects. Not many of them turn out to be very good. I think one of the easy bets is that Joey Gallo won't be a Yankee on August 3rd. They know now that this isn't going to work. They'll park him someplace else. Uh, and I do think they have to address the bullpen because right now, one of their biggest issues is doing this and hoping they can reclaim Araldis mm -hmm. Chapman and Jonathan Loisaga. Loisaga might have been the best relief pitcher in the American League last year. He's been bad this year. Mm -hmm. Chapman's been bad. And can they pray that they get Zach Britton back for September and October and he can make a difference? It's too much praying. They've got to yeah. go get mm -hmm. a relief pitching. On the subject of pitching, why don't we drill down? We are going to see two Subway yeah. Series games. And one of the issues that will come up in these two games is Met pitching versus this Yankee lineup. I think as we're sitting here, the Yankees are leading the, the sport in runs per game. Can this Mets pitching one through nine innings, not just the starters who yeah. I think are very good, can they stop yeah. this Yankee team? Uh, it's not going to be easy. I mean, Judge has been the best player in the American League to this point and certainly getting contributions. You mentioned LeMahieu and... You know, up and down that lineup is pretty good. I think some of the guys have even underachieved, so we may see even more. <clears throat> Obviously, Stanton is really a threat as well, so um, I think it's a, tough, it's a tough case for the Mets. Right now, I think the Yankees are a slightly better team. I think right now we're looking at four teams. You mentioned there are only a certain number of teams that can win the World Series. I think it's the Dodgers, the Astros, and the two New York teams. Those are the four best. Maybe because I'm looking up close at the Mets and Yankees, I see a couple flaws with the Mets and Yankees. I'm thinking we saw Houston, their number four and five starters, give up no hits against the Yankees. They look to me like... And they might have Lance McCullers coming. Come back, right? Yeah. And they're working hard, too. They're trying to get there, talking about Castillo as well, and Bell, and they're working hard. They can improve in certain areas, center field potentially, maybe catcher. So they can get better, but they're already great. To me, their pitching is is kind of scary. Um, I think the Mets pitching is really is good if they get DeGrom. You know, I mean, it's a wish. It's a hope. It's almost a prayer. We don't know. They've moved it back many. They won't admit it because they don't tell you when he's coming back. <laughs> but they've moved it back like 50 times at this point, right? The hope is he's not going to make it, obviously, for the Subway Series. Hope is it's going to be very soon after that, though. If, I mean, if you have DeGrom and you have Scherzer, that's quite a in thing a for the playoffs, series, right? right? I mean, that's quite good for the playoffs. And Taiwan Walker, he should have been on the All-Star team. He's been excellent as well. So their pitching is good. If they get DeGrom, it'll be spectacular. If they add it to the bullpen, it could be the best in the game. So I think one of the unique things at this moment in the Subway Series is you know, we're at a quarter of a century. This will be the first time where the designated hitter is in play tomorrow night in City yeah. Field, right? Uh, so this used to be a disadvantage where the Yankees would have to take a hitter off the field. And so the Yankees will have the nine hitting compliments, depending what you think about Gallo if he's in the lineup. But the Mets have added Vogel back in time for kind right. of this series uh, against the Yankees, which is interesting. You know, I do think this is an interesting measuring stick for the Yankees, who are so far ahead in the division, like those games against the Astros, those are measuring sticks for the season. They didn't rise to that occasion. They lost five of the seven games. And because it's the Mets, and the Mets are very good, and it's the city, and you know what the place is going to sound like tomorrow, this is another measuring stick for them. And a big question for them is, are they too Aaron Judge reliant? Right? Like, like, should they be thinking hard about a Soto, or at least you mentioned a Ben Attendee, another bat, so it's just like on a day where maybe you get an 0-4 for with three strikeouts out of Aaron Judge, you still have a good line. Yeah, I mean, I still think their offense is great with Soto as, I mean, with, with Judge as the key guy. I, I'm not expecting Soto to come to the Yankees. One advantage they do have in the talks is they've kept their payroll reasonable, as we say, $250 million, not the $290 million where the Mets and the Dodgers are. Not that the Mets and the Dodgers are going to stop there, but being at 250, they could take a bad contract back like a Corbin or something. So that gives them a little bit of an edge with the, with the trade. I still think the Yankees are not the favorite at this point for Soto. So I think they're going to generally rely on what they have with that change that you said, that I do think Gallo is probably not going to be with the team. I'm looking at Texas. I'm looking at San Diego. I think they're going to get more of a contact guy, which I guess that could be anybody, right? But 
a real contact guy. So I think they'd love to get Ben Intendi if he'll agree to get vaccinated. If he's unvaccinated, it's hard to take him. They have to go to Toronto. They may play Toronto in the playoffs. You know, they'll have to probably look elsewhere, probably not Ben Intendi. But if he is vaccinated, vaccinated to me, that's the perfect person for Because he gives you some batting average. Yeah. You know, he, you know he can hit good, good yeah. pit, uh, pitching, and he's postseason proven, right? right? He was on a championship team, which you always want with the Yankees. You know, they brought in Gallo, who had never played an important game in his five years in Texas, and it proved he couldn't handle it here. You mentioned a few teams. I think Milwaukee has some interest in Gallo. I think Minnesota has a little. And I'm not sure they do, but a team that should a little bit is the White Sox, whose outfield defense yeah. might be <clears> the worst <throat> outfield. Like, whatever right. you say about Joey Gallo, he's a good outfielder. Yes. They don't draw a lot of walks. They have almost no left-handed power of the White Sox. That's a team that should think about him. Again, as you look for what's interesting, unique about this Subway Series tomorrow, Buckshaw, well, Luis Rojas is the third yep. base coach for the Yankees. He was recently the Mets manager. And Buck Walter, who was the Yankee, his first job 30 years ago when yeah. you and I were pups and on the beat yeah. back then. You were a pup. Maybe and, I was a little bit older. Yes, than you were a little older than a pup. <laughs> he was uh, the Yankee manager yeah. from 92 to 95. What do you think that brings to this series? Oh, it certainly makes it more interesting. Obviously, Buck Walter managed in a different era. It was the Steinbrenner, the George Steinbrenner era, much different than Hal. Hal's a much different guy, you know. It's not the same thing, but it was funny. I was there last night, and he was asked about now finally being part of the Subway Series. And, you know, he never wants to admit he wasn't part of any. Yeah. But he mentioned that the Mayor's Cup or the Mayor's Trophy, I, don't, I always call the Mayor's Trophy, I think, back in those Well, days. in our day, remember, George would go crazy if they lost yes. a spring training game to the Mets. And he did mention, yeah. right, that he was involved in big games against the Mets when they went to Port St. Lucie or even when they played the Red Sox in spring training, it counted wasn't quite the same as this kind of a Subway series. So it's a little bit different, but I, it certainly adds something to it because, I mean, he came up with the Yankees, started with the Yankees. I think he was making like $150,000 to manage the Yankees. Now he's making quite a bit more than that, and it's a totally different. He's in his th like 35 years old. Now he's, you know, I don't want to mention his age, but he, yeah. he's a little older than I am. But Doing a great job. Very interesting part of this of this series. And it's a small part. I, I, I think the Yankees pretty much really like Aaron Boone, and we're bringing Aaron Boone back. But there's the moment they stared into the abyss oh, yeah. after last offseason and wondered, should they maybe make a play for Buck to have Buck It was too? brought up. Yeah, yeah I mentioned know. it. It was brought up, and I, I think it went down quickly because I think Brian Cashman was so far in Aaron Boone's corner. I, I think it was a good decision to bring Aaron Boone back. I mean, I think he has improved already, and I think this will help them throughout the playoffs. I think he is much feistier, much more greater attention to detail. I thought he was a good manager, and he certainly had one of the highest winning percentages regular season of anybody, but I think he's a really good manager, and he's really good for that team. Yeah, you know, he, a lot of stuff changes over the course of the season, and, he, I, you know, he tends not to get credit. You know, Aaron Judge is a willing center fielder. He made yeah. Clay Holmes the closer. Uh, you know, he has LeMayu moving all over the field. Like a guy like Josh Donaldson, who's used to playing every day, probably plays seven out or eight out of ten games. You know, he's got to navigate all of this, and he's navigated it well. John, again, we're a quarter century plus into the Subway Series. We probably have each covered dozens and dozens of these games. I think I've been at almost every Subway Series game in this period. Give me a memory or two. What sticks out? Yeah, there? I mean, the most obvious thing was the first one with Dave Malicki throwing that shutout. Um, incredible performance by him because, I mean, there was so much excitement around that game. But for me, the most memorable thing was the firing of the Mets coaches. And I think that was at Yankee Stadium, right? And I remember yeah. Bobby Valentine had all these beloved coaches who were, you know, very close to him. And he... Steve Phillips fired them all. And if you remember and that morning, we're wondering, is Bobby getting fired also? Because we're wondering, is Bobby going to stand yeah. up to the point where, like, I'm not letting these coaches go? So, I mean, yeah. that was some day, as I remember it. Um, something else. Yeah, I mean, Bob Apodaca, very close to him, was the pitching coach, fired. Tom Robson was the hitting coach, fired. And, you know, I mean, it was a very bold move. Obviously, Phillips and Valentine already weren't getting along, but this was really kind of the end of the relationship, I think, although, you know, they, they had to work together and they ended up having an incredible second half. So Steve Phillips made the right call. As it turns out, 
<clears throat> they did much better with the new set of coaches. Yeah, they played great after that. You mentioned two for me, Maliki mm -hmm. that day. I'm going to pick early July 2000. They play one of the, again, a unique doubleheader. It hadn't happened in forever. Two stadium doubleheader, right? I oh, remember yeah. being on the bus mm -hmm. going from Shea Stadium, right, right. to the other Yankee Stadium. This is a, these are stadiums ago. Dwight Gooden pitches at Shea Stadium and wins game one. Game two is Clemens bean, beaning Mike Piazza, right? The Yankees yeah. win both ends of it, but that then carries over to the Subway Series, which is the World Series yeah. of 2000, which turns out to be the bat incident, you know, the broken <laughs> bat. Well, he so, thought it was the ball. He Remember, thought, Clemens yes. thought it was the ball. He couldn't tell the difference. He had hardly one ever the, touched a baseball at that point. One of the greatest then, pitchers of all time. I, I could tell the difference, yes. but he had yeah. a funny comment for it, but... Yeah, yeah, I was totally sympathizing with Piazza there. I, I Well, I mean, in that moment, remember, Piazza had owned Clemens, had hit a bunch yeah. of uh, big homers off of him, and it felt purposeful in the moment that he was at least coming up and in. I, I would like to believe he doesn't want to hit somebody in the head. Right. But I, in that moment, when Piazza mm. goes down and you hear, like, the, you, it was so loud, you could hear the ball hit the helmet uh, in, the, in the stadium, and Piazza's down. I mean, you have to worry for the guy's health yeah like that's that moment there and then all the context comes afterwards that carries over right into uh clemens start in the world series but but that day just stands out for me because it's the first and probably the last time i'm ever going to get a police escort any place i hope <laughs> because you they, got one they because they uh, the media buses followed the the teams okay so we were on a media bus that followed both the mets and yankees from yeah. shea stadium to um yankee stadium and so we were just last in line, and we got a police escort to there. It was a good way to travel. I don't know that I'll be traveling that way anytime <laughs> No, you soon. won't. Neither will I. Unless there's an arrest involved, no, I think. I, yeah. Well, I think you'll That's, be okay there. But, uh, I mean, what a, that was fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of the storyline, it was fantastic. And Piazza, I give him credit. And then they play together on the All-Star team soon after that. The, the USA. I think the, uh, I think at the All-Star Game in oh, Houston, yeah, 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 yeah. they played together and they had to coexist. And, uh, I mean, that's a great memory. I'm glad you brought that up, Joel. Yeah. Well, hopefully we got two teams in first place as they about to face each other in the first of the two two-game series against each other. And hopefully there's a lot of great memories still coming in the Subway Series. Baseball in the Burrows is presented by Verizon. Verizon is going ultra, so you can too.